It's a random question, maybe driven by beer at a barbecue. So, I'm digging a hole. Suppose I dig a really deep hole to the other side of the earth. Suppose I jump in, what happens? And so it originally started back in the 1880s and a guy called Cooper in 1960 started doing some hard physics and he gave us the standard answer, which everybody knows is 42, so it's 42 minutes. So you jump into a hole and you appear on the other side of the earth 42 minutes later and it's a coincidence, a nice coincidence that this fits in with Douglas Adams that the answer to the life, the universe and everything is 42 minutes. The trouble is it's slightly wrong. Mm, so what's going on there? Well, um, we, we've got more information. Now, mind you, it's incredibly difficult to drill a hole even 10 kilometres because the temperature rises by 10 degrees C for every kilometre you go down. So if you go down 6,000 kilometres, it's hotter than the surface of the sun. So your first problem with drilling a hole is that very soon <laughs> you've run out of solid rock after about six, you know, 60 kilometres and you're into molten rock. Mm -hmm. How do you drill through lava, right? So you, and, and molten rock is a, what do you call a hostile, environment, mm. so that's your first problem. OK, let's assume that we've got some sort of magically strong drill made of unobtainium and we've got a sort of a cylinder wall of unobtainium that will withstand molten rock. So you, down you go through, through the centre of it. So you're going down through roughly solidish rock, mm -hmm. molten gloopy rock, lava type rock, then liquid iron and then, then solid iron and then back the other way to the other side. So you're going through all these different layers. OK, so you've you got your hole. So the first problem is drilling a hole. The second problem is the heat. OK, well, pretend that it's a, a really good insulator. The third problem is that you've got massive air pressure. How much? So much air pressure that the air turns into firstly a solid and then a liquid. OK, we'll, we'll, we'll get rid of all the air. We'll suck all the air out and make it a vacuum. OK, the third problem is you run into the Coriolis effect, which is because the Earth is spinning. Right. So, uh, in, for example, in war, if you're firing guns on a north south trajectory, you've got to compensate for the fact that the Earth is moving a little bit and the Coriolis effect and the twist of cyclones. Is this to do with the way water runs on either the northern or southern yeah, hemisphere? Yeah, yeah. And, and that's actually been done at the University of Sydney and MIT, but that's another story. We might get that. And so, um, basically, if you don't account for that, by the time you're a couple of thousand kilometres down, you're rubbing up against the side with a sideways velocity of 1,500 kilometres per hour. Let's assume you're just doing it through the north-south pole so you don't have to worry about that. OK, so you've got your magic hole and then you, you're wearing... There's no air in it and it will withstand the heat and you're wearing a space suit and you're carrying your own air and you just go walk and then you start dropping. You start accelerating, going faster and faster and faster. And there's an interesting theorem in physics called the Shell Theorem which basically says that you can ignore everything above you and just to pretend that if you're a 1,000 kilometres down, you're, you're basically inside a smaller sphere that's a 1,000 kilometres smaller in radius. So, uh, firstly, you've got all this much Earth in front of you pulling you, then this much, then this much, and this much. So you're accelerating, but you're accelerating at a decreasing rate. So by the time you get to the centre, there's no acceleration, but you've picked up this speed of 28,000 kilometres per hour. You're moving really fast, and then you start to slow down. And then after 42 minutes, you get to the other side. And if you want, you can just grab on and then walk out, or <laughs> you, you just sort of go backwards and forwards. This is a first-year physics problem. The trouble right. was that we, we, we know so much more. Yes. We now know, thanks to our satellites and our geological data, that the Earth's density increases up to about 13 times, that there's sudden discontinuities. In fact, that because of these sudden discontinuities, you actually accelerate for a little while faster than you would at the surface, 1.09 g. So, uh, so uh, gravity God, isn't constant? No, it's not constant because it, it goes, goes to zero at the centre. So right at the top of the Earth where you're standing here, all of the Earth is in front of you and is saying, come to me, Miriam. And when you're at the centre, half of it's saying, come to me, and the other half is saying, come to me. So you're just floating. Mm. And when you're sort of in between, you've got most of the Earth sucking on you and a bit, uh, in that way and some of it's sucking back. You know, So the acceleration is changing all the Could time. Could be a bit of a bungee effect there. Yeah, it is. It's exactly a bungee. And you go backwards and forwards on a bungee effect, like what they call, to be sciencey about it, they call it simple harmonic motion. And a guy called Alexander Klotz at McGill University decided to say, well, let me incorporate the new data. And the new data then says that, uh, unfortunately for Douglas Adams, it's not... 42 minutes, it's 38 minutes and 11 seconds, but we've still got the thing where, pretty consistently, if you go from Sydney to London, it's 38 minutes, Sydney to Newcastle, it's 38 minutes, Sydney to Perth, Sydney to anywhere, anywhere to anywhere is 38 minutes. 
and it'd be a wonderful form of communication and free in terms of energy once you'd actually gone to the trouble of building the hole. <laughs> there are a few minor engineering problems <laughs> in building the hole and I love the way that the guy who wrote this, the physicist, he was a student, he didn't say, of course, it's impossible that we'll ever build a hole. He said, and I love his optimism, he said, it's unlikely we'll build it in the near future. Oh, my God, what's he thinking of? <laughs> so we've got all this dark matter and their dark energy. Maybe in 50 years or 100 years we'll have the technologies and the materials to do it. And so he's saying, oh, maybe in the near future it'll be possible, but not right now. Maybe, maybe. Something to look forward to there. A trip out the other side. And free once you've actually built it. Oh, and does it matter depending on the size of the person going through the hole? Uh, no, the mass of the person and the size is, is totally independent. It can be a, a tiny steel ball or it can be an elephant. It'll still take 38 minutes to go from anywhere to anywhere. Although, unless you do it through the north-south pole axis, you'll be sort of rubbing against the side of the tube at 1,500 kilometres per hour. We'll solve that problem too. Don't worry. We're good at that. Scientists are good at that stuff. One size fits all. Let's hope, Dr Carl. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr Virion.